Okay, so we've uh, we've just applied that black edge around the um, our surface, and if we if we hide the rest of it, we can see that it does sort of come onto the um, the central surface. And now um, now what we might do is go through and blur that. Um, that out to make it a little bit more subtle of a, uh, a transition. So I'll pause the video and um, finish doing that all around the edges. Okay, so we've blurred it out a little bit so that we've um, got uh, a better sort of gradation as it comes towards the end there. Now I want this, um, this shadow to sort of uh, blend in a little bit better where we have this sort of raised geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'll just zoom in to this corner here. Now with the standard brush uh, I've switched on lazy mouse and I've got the RGB intensity. I'll set that to something like 10. And If we drag up like this we can see that we, we can have sort of strokes coming in just to sort of make some sort of uh, flow from this sort of this shadow up to this sort of area here and uh, you'll notice that there is sort of a slight sort of harshness to the end there so we might just sort of turn that down and just sort of yeah just sort of to grade that out a little bit smoother and so I'm just going to go around to wherever I wherever I would like sort of the um, the shadow or the shading to sort of come further up into the object. I'm just going to drag these sorts of brush strokes up into the mesh. Now this section at the top is um, it's particularly important to to get the um, the shading to sort of come down into the um, into the object itself, so I'm just going to go through and just to sort of round out the shading on these these areas here. So I'm going to do this all the way along here and just sort of just increase that and then sort of reduce it down when I when I need to sort of grade it out um, a little bit better. Okay, I've just sort of brought these in in roughly here. Then I can go over with the smooth just to sort of just to add that subtlety into this sort of gradient. And switching off the lazy mouse, I can sort of fill in these these areas here and then smooth them back out just to sort of add that shadow where it needs to be. Okay so we're starting to define the shape nicely there and we're, we're sort of darkening out that that border there. Now because this here is uh, is quite dark um, and we want it to sort of we want these ribs to be sort of suggestive of these ribs I'm going to add a, a darker line down the center here so I might just sort of zoom in and move up there and I'll just switch lazy mouse back on and I'll draw down the middle with a darker line and then sort of smooth that out like this just so that it adds that sort of um, that idea that this is the same as the uh, the ribs over here okay so we've 
drawn that central line down there, just trying to make it look as much like this sort of area here as possible. And uh, now, um, this texture map is almost, or well, practically complete. Uh, we could go in there and sort of um, add a little bit more detail, maybe sort of uh, rough things out. But because these um, lessons are already going on a bit long, I think this will uh, will be fine for our demonstration purposes. Uh, if um, you're doing this at home, you can um, you can perhaps come in and uh, and try something even more daring, and uh, go in with a with a bit more detail. But uh, but for me, I think this will this will be fine for our purposes. So the uh, first step in uh, creating a or or to export this texture out so that we can apply it in UDK is to actually have a texture to uh, paste these colors onto. So I'm going to go up to the texture menu and I'm going to come down and I'm going to set the texture width to 1024. That's because that's the um, texture dimensions that I'm going to um, use in UDK. And so it's 1024 by 1024. And then I'm going to click on New. Now the first thing that we notice is that everything goes black or goes whatever color we had as our main color. And um, and what about that? We've lost all of our work. We have to start again. No, it's not. It's not quite that bad. Um, if we come down to texture, uh, and we um, first we come up to RGB intensity and make sure that that's set to 100, and we click on the colors uh, colors to texture um, button, and there we go. We have successfully transferred all of the vertex painting that we did onto a texture. Now you can see it right there. Actually that, w that way up it sort of looks like an evil Zoidberg from um, Futurama. Uh, that does raise a, a good point though. Uh, in this texture map you can see that the the orangey yellow eye things are at the top of the map and um, w we actually uh, have this UV mapped um, to the upside down of this uh, of this sort of arrangement. So uh, going up to texture, uh, we can flip this texture vertically with the flip V button. So we can flip it. You notice that on our mesh, it sort of looks a bit strange now. Uh, but we can then go to export this texture out. And um, I'll just save it in the data folder. If I was importing this for a Maya project, if I was going to do renders in Maya, I'd probably go and save it into a um, into a textures uh, folder um, or source images or something like that. But um, because this is um, uh, this is for UDK. It's easy enough just to keep it all in the data folder so that we know where to find it. So I'm just going to come here and if you just bear with me not being able to type. So we'll just save it as um, the quarter pipe um, wall color. And with that done we can we can switch off our texture and we'll go back to go back to our poly painting and in the next lesson we'll actually um, export out the normal maps and a displacement map to be used as a height map in UDK and um, also look at possible options for when we export this mesh out um, if we wanted to use the original mesh or if we wanted to export another mesh that might fit with our new displacements better